Hey guys, it is NCSFan001 here for another one of those weekly trophy list updates. Today's date is Monday, January 9th, 2022. So this will have covered the week of January the 2nd through the 8th of 2023. And I think I did that again, where I called it uh, 2022 and it's actually 2023. Surprisingly, that only happened maybe one or two times at work this week for me. So that's definitely better than I was expecting it to be. Uh, hopefully, I will eventually remember that it is 2023 and not 2022. Anyway, uh, there was tons of trophy progress this week, but that's almost exclusively because I decided to do a uh, Platinum Dumpster Dive live stream uh, on Friday. So, as you can see here, I played a lot of games, and they were not very good quality games for the most part. So, I don't know exactly how long this video is going to be because most of these games were super, super short. But I got 15 Platinums in that live stream, and I got them in about 90 minutes. So, that wasn't even playing some of the fastest ones out there. So, going to make a whole video for that instead of doing them broken up as separate videos like I normally do. I'm just going to do those as like a whole uh, slightly longer video just because I think that would be a lot more efficient. So, as for trophies earned this week, I did earn one really good Platinum this week, and that is What Remains of Edith Finch for the PS5. Uh, what Remains of Edith Finch is a really, really good walking simulator game that was originally out on the PlayStation 4, but now we got a PS5 version, and the PS5 version actually comes with a Platinum trophy. The PS4 version did not have a Platinum, surprisingly. So the Platinum Trophy is very, very easy as long as you just follow a guide to get through things a little bit faster. You really actually don't need a guide that much in this game. Just as long as you know what the trophies are and what chapters they take place in, you could probably get through all of it without a guide. So you have one trophy here for completing the entire story. So this is unmissable story-related trophy. Uh, this is the most missable trophy in the game. You have to complete the game while looking at all the peepholes and telescopes long enough to hear commentary. I want to say there's about 10 of these total in the game. So there's not too many. And most of them are actually done like really early on in the game. So this is probably the only one that you definitely want to have a guide pulled up for. Just because it is easy to miss a few of them. Uh, then you have to take both paths to the house. This is right at the beginning of the game. You just walk down one path, and then when you get in front of the house, turn around and walk the other path until the trophy unlocks. Simple enough. Uh, this is during the very first, uh, sort of story that you go into when you're playing as, I think it's Molly, the, like, ten-year-old. Uh, with that one, she transforms into different animals during it. And during one of those, you're going to be like an eagle or an owl. An owl. I don't know why I thought eagle. But you're going to be an owl and you're going to swoop down a couple of times to catch rabbits. You have to do it within two swoops. But if you screw up, you can always back out of the game and try again. Not to mention the entire game does have chapter select after the fact or just like replay sections. So there's nothing truly missable. This also occurs in the Molly chapter because it's like you transform into a snake and you slither around across a ship and you just have to listen to the drunken sailor while he sings an entire song, which takes a couple of minutes, but it's nothing difficult. Uh, this is in the chapter where you play as the, like, 16-year-old actress that has the scream. Uh, during that section, you have to use... You're going to pick up, like, a crutch when you go to the basement, and you use it to knock everything off of the pool table. Uh, not just the pool balls, you also have to knock off, like, cans and a couple pieces of wood and stuff, so it won't unlock till you get everything. This is when you're playing as Gregory, when you're in the bathtub, he's the infant or toddler, whatever you would call a one or two year old, and you have to control the little frog thing and knock all the letters off the side of the bathtub. It's It controls a little bit awkwardly, but it's nothing too difficult. This is an unmissable story related trophy that you will get while going through the credits. Uh, then you have this trophy, which was also in the original, uh, even though this one down here wasn't, which is kind of uh, funny. I guess you could say. So you're going to get both of these two trophies together. So once you finish the game, just replay Calvin's story, which is the one where you're on the swing. Just replay that story. It only takes a few minutes. And once you've replayed it, you will unlock both trophies. So again, this one down here for replay a story, this one was added in extra. Uh, I guess just to get it enough trophies so they could have a platinum. And then this trophy is also completely new to this version. It is in Dawn's chapter. She's the, like, preteen type of girl that takes 
photographs of everything. So during her section, it's going to be when you're outside, like when she's in front of a sign and it's raining outside. You have to find the rabbit and take a picture of it. Once again, it's, it's pretty easy. It just may take a couple moments to find exactly where that rabbit is. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a simple enough, easy enough Platinum. Definitely an enjoyable one. Would highly recommend playing through this game, especially if you didn't play it back on the PS4. You should absolutely play through it here. Uh, the game took me a little over two hours, but you can absolutely do it faster because I'm sure I wasn't really focusing on it the entire time I was playing it. But you can do this Platinum definitely in under two hours if you're really like trying to speed run it. So great game, highly recommended. I was able to get it for free with whatever tier of PS Plus I'm on. So now we break into the Platinum Dumpster Dive stream and a lot of these games are pretty similar to one another. For example, we start off with Would You Like to Run an Idol Cafe 1 and 2. These are the North American PS4 and PS5 versions of the games. So with both games, uh, both of them are very, very quick Platinum trophies. So as you can see here, it took me about 3 minutes to get the Platinum on the PS4 version. And this version also took about three minutes. So they're both very, very quick and easy games. Really, all you have to do is get all the different endings throughout the game and make a few other specific choices. So really, all you have to do is look at even just like a text guide is perfectly fine. But I'm sure that like Bad Driver and them have also put up video guides, I'm sure. So all you have to do is make specific choices and make strategically placed saves so that you can reload right before you make certain choices. And yeah, that's that's literally all you have to do. It takes, you know, three to four minutes. Uh, you can just text skip. That's how it's so fast. A lot of these visual novel games are that way to where you can just use the text skip option to fast forward through all the text very, very quickly. So you do have that option and that is highly recommended if you're only in it for the trophies. Uh, Idol Cafe 2 is pretty much the exact same thing though. Does that one have more trophies? Yeah, the Idol Cafe 2 has slightly more trophies and this one does take a little bit longer. This one took about six minutes compared to the other one taking about three minutes. So I guess just keep that in mind if you were trying to do like a world record speedrun or something of 100 Platinums or something. You would want to do maybe the first one but not this one. So yeah, this one takes about 6 minutes. But once again, you just have to get all the different endings. And you have to just make specific dialogue choices. Make uh, perfectly spaced saves at certain areas. And just follow a guide and you're good to go. Once again, I mean, there's not really that much more else to say about Idol Cafe. Now, apparently this is actually a thing in Japan. They're called Maid Cafes and people did confirm this on the live stream where apparently they have the women there dress up as maids and take care of the businessmen that come in, but not in like a sexual way. I, I don't know. It, it's weird. It's weird. But apparently it is an actual thing, and that was confirmed by people in the stream, so that's interesting, I suppose. Next up was Sakura Succubus, the original Sakura Succubus. I did uh, the fifth game at some... or no, it was the fourth. Was it the fourth game or the fifth game? I think it was the fourth game that I did at some point. Because I actually got a free copy of that game uh, from the developer so I could review it and play through it. Which was pretty cool. So, of course, I I'm not going to turn down a free game, you know. Like, who, who turns down a free game? Even if it's this. Who turns down a free game and therefore a free, easy platinum trophy? But this is the easiest one of the bunch. I think that at the time this is being recorded, there are six of the Sakura Succubus games, as well as other games that are like very similar to this or in this same universe but have different titles. But this one is the fastest and the easiest. Unlike all the other ones, every single trophy is story related no matter what dialogue options you pick. So as long as you set the text speed to max and basically skip through everything as quickly as possible and just pick the first dialogue option each time, uh, you will get all of your trophies in about one minute, making this one of the fastest and easiest platinum trophies ever made. Uh, yeah, so the weird thing about this is how uncommon the platinum is because... When you look back at it, Idol Cafe 1 and 2, you know, this one's 89%, and this one is 78%, and then on the PS5 versions, it's 74% almost, and almost 87%, so that one's actually pretty high, I guess. 
but like all of these have higher platinum obtaining rates than Secure Succubus, even though this one literally requires no effort. I mean, you could possibly say that it's because people are trying to watch the entire story of the game, but the fact that you don't even have to get all the different endings and it doesn't matter what dialogue options you pick in this particular game makes me wonder how it's so much less common. Obviously, if you're on, like, PSN Profiles, it's more common, or it's about the same level because they're all, like, 98-99% obtained rates. Uh, but I, I don't really get that. I don't know why the first game is of this series is so much rarer than these when it requires just absolutely no effort. Because even with these, if you're playing through all these games legitimately, with the Idol Cafe, once again, you have to get the different endings. And this one you don't. So I don't know what that is. I don't know why that's a thing. I don't know. If anyone has any opinions as to why that is, please let me know in the comments because that's definitely something that surprised me. Next up, we have No Man's Sky for the PS5. So this was actually not only a Platinum Trophy auto pop, but I also got my 25,000th trophy doing this, which is pretty awesome. That's a huge milestone, a quarter of the way to 100k. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I tried to rhyme that. But anyway, uh, this Platinum Trophy, this game, first and foremost, has gotten many times better than it was when it first released. And in fact, over the next couple weeks, I'm going to spend a little bit of time playing this game casually. I just want to experience it now, now that it is more like how it was supposed to be when it first released. So, the Platinum Trophy isn't anything overly difficult uh, overall, but it is. it does take some time and it has changed a lot throughout history. So, with this Platinum, in the very original version of the game, version 1.0, before any of the patches on the PS4 version, all, all the trophies are tied to finishing milestones within the game, and you have to finish the maximum level of every milestone except for one. Uh, from what I remember, you didn't have to do the one where you had to kill a certain number of Sentinels. Surprisingly, that was never a trophy. I don't know why they didn't make that one uh, three trophies out of that, or even just add it in as a DLC later. I don't really know why they decided on that. But for whatever reason, that's not something you have to do. So you have to do all the other milestones. And in the original version, finishing the milestones was much easier. Then they patched the game uh, with the early, like, day one type of patches to make it more stable and playable, but also altered the trophies, and they became a little bit more difficult. Now, the Platinum Trophy is only about a 3 out of 10 still, and it takes, like, 20 to 30 hours uh, mostly depending depending on both your skill and some luck as to, you know, what kind of planets you get. But overall, it's nothing too terribly difficult. Back when I did it, it was pretty simple. Uh, now, I will say one thing, though, is the game is a whole heck of a lot more complicated than it was when it first came out. So it's going to take some learning, some relearning of everything to get back to how the game is. Uh, in the modern day, because things have changed a lot. It used to be so simple, you hardly needed anything to, like, fuel your ship at the very beginning and stuff like that. So for the trophies, you have to obtain the highest level, which is the 10th level of Milestone, in each of these nine different categories. Or is it... How many categories is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Is it only eight? Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, so there was just... Oh, okay, so there were fewer bronze trophies. Got it. But you did have to obtain the maximum level in eight of the nine different categories. Like I said, you don't have to do the Sentinel one. Uh, for Planet Zoology Scanned, I think this one was for uh, getting like all of the life forms on planets. Except that this one's apparently easier now because there are some planets that release with only like one total life form or something. So that makes this significantly easier if that's the case. I don't know how true that is though. Uh, space exploration is warping between planets a whole lot. Uh, units accrued is currency within the game. Words collected is learning dialogue options, learning words from those, like, glyphs on planets. Uh, alien colonist encounters is, like, talking to aliens, which can be done at bases on planets as well as on the uh, space stations. Ships destroyed is fighting off enemy ships in space. 
Extreme Survival, this was always the really, really difficult one because you had to survive a certain amount of time on, like, an extreme planet, on, like, a single extreme planet or something. Maybe not a single extreme planet, but you had to survive a long time on planets with extreme weather. But there was an easy way to do it back in the day. You could hide out inside of, like, if you could find a little building on the planet, you could hide out inside of that. And you just have to go back to the game every, like, half hour to an hour just to give you some life support materials. I don't know if that's still the way you do it, though. And then on-foot exploration is just moving around the planet, taking steps. Uh, as for the Pathfinder update, the game has received far more updates than this, but this is the only one that requires you to actually uh, get any trophies. It's the only one that has trophies. So you have to claim a base or buy a freighter. That's pretty self-explanatory. You either build a base for yourself, uh, just start building a base for yourself and you'll get that, or buy yourself a freighter, which I still don't really understand how all of that works, because again, I'm trying to relearn the game now. Uh, the Exocraft is... I think it's like a rover or something from what I remember. Visit another player's base is an online trophy, but I think you just have to join into anyone else's, like you can join into someone else's game and go to it. Though there's multiplayer in the game now to where you can actually play with other people uh, more easily. So I'm sure that if someone else just built a base on the same planet that you're on going into it, I'm sure it would count. However, your two difficult trophies here, these are by far the most difficult trophies in the game. It, and thankfully they do stack, so if you finish the game on permadeath, you'll get both of these trophies at once. Uh, for this, you have to reach the center of the galaxy in survival and in permadeath. In survival, you die a lot faster, the elements are way more harsh, stuff like that. For permadeath, however, you are on, I think you're on survival mode, but you only have one life. However, this game's version of permadeath is effectively permadeath light. It's not true permadeath because... Anytime you get in and out of your ship and anytime you do certain other actions in the game, it creates a restore point. So realistically, as long as you can get to your ship on your first planet, you can get in and get out so you create a restore point, quit out of the game, back up your save, and then you have no real risk. And you can do that as often as you want. So it's, it's more suggested permadeath than true permadeath in the sense of games like Wolfenstein 2. And additionally, to make these trophies much easier, if you happen to have a friend or colleague out there that has a base on a planet very close to the center of the galaxy, you can join their game on that planet, then just warp once or twice and reach the center. Uh, I would highly recommend doing it that way. It will make your life a whole lot easier, or at the very least, it will take a lot less time. But if you want to do it legitimately, there are faster ways to do it now than there once were. I think there's like black holes or something you can jump through if you follow certain storylines. Though again, you still need some luck with what kind of planets you get and what kind of materials you find. So, the game is a lot better now, and like I said, I'm actually looking forward to going back and playing it some casually. I'm playing it on like an easier difficulty just to have the most fun with it, to just see how much better it's gotten, because I think it's going to be a good time just to casually play through something like that, sort of like what I would do with like the Fallout games. Next up on Easy Platinums, we had... Round Invaders and Round Invaders Rush. Now, this is the re-released North American version, which is a really weird-sounding name for it. Yeah, this is the re-released North American version, and I got the Platinum in about two to three minutes. It's very, very easy. So you have to complete the first four levels of the game, and you also have to reach a total of 2,000 points. Both of those are going to come, all those trophies are going to come naturally by finishing the first four levels of the game, which are all extremely, extremely easy. Then when you get to either level four or level five, I think it's actually level five, uh, you start fighting red saucers, so you have to destroy one of them. They don't do anything differently. Uh, you have to shoot once, which is obviously unmissable. That's the first trophy you're going to get in the game. Uh, you have to finish a level without spending a single rocket. So basically the way to do this is you complete the first level without spending a rocket. Then you finish levels 2 through 4, killing everything. Then on level 5, you destroy the red saucer. Then you shoot all of your rockets, and then you let the enemies kill you. And that's literally all you have to do. It's that easy. It's There's nothing much more else to say about it. It's, it's not a good game. Uh, only buy it if it's on sale, like on a deep discount sale, which is what I did. And that's really all there is to say about that one. Round Invaders Rush is not even a similar game. It's like a, it's like an old 
phone game you'd get on like those old flip phones back in the good old days. Uh, you just move left and right and collect falling ice cream cones. Y yeah, I, I don't get that. I don't get how that has anything to do with aliens or whatever this is. Uh, but you have to grab the basic ice cream cone, which is unmissable. It's going to be the first trophy you get. And this version also, this game also took me less than two minutes. You have to grab one of the spumonies, that's what they call it. It's the one, it's just the bowl with three things of ice cream in it, which doesn't appear until you get like 30 to 45 seconds into the game. You have to earn a total of 350 points, as well as I think these are just for moving around like a certain number of steps, I assume. Uh, but you're going to get basically every single trophy along the way to getting this main trophy right here. Uh, this trophy you won't be able to get until right at about a minute in the game when uh, the triple ice cream cones start falling. So you have to grab a total of at least 30 standard cones and two of the almost ice cream sundae looking bowls uh, within a single game. But it's extremely easy and again if you somehow miss this the game it'll take you maybe a minute to get back there. Uh, this one is just for losing a heart, which is going to come naturally when you get to that high of level because of how fast everything moves. And then just grab a second ice cream cone. Like, yeah, I don't know where they were thinking with some of these trophies. I mean, this is just another one of those shovelware easy platinum games. Again, I only did it because I was doing a whole live stream series on these games. Next up, High School Romance, because we need yet another visual novel game. This one took about five minutes like with the earlier ones, and just like the previous games, all you have to do is complete the game with all of the different endings, and that, that's literally it. Just do all the different endings, make a few specific dialogue choices along the way by having your saves in the right places so you can reload them and more quickly get through the game. That, that's literally all you have to do. There's really not much more else to say about this. It takes about five minutes, and again, even that one's more common than Sakura Succubus. I, I still don't get that. And then the PS5 version also took me about five minutes. So, again, there's really nothing much more else to say about this. I, I've discussed visual novels already. And, speaking of visual novels, here's another one. Dating Life, Miley and Emily. Now, this one's even shorter. This one only takes about three minutes with proper save reloading. Because the game itself is just really, really short, even though it does have a lot of endings. It's noticeably shorter than some of these other visual novel games I've done. So once again, get all the different endings and pick certain dialogue options and have the right placement of saves, and that's literally all you have to do. Again, there's just not much more else to say about this kind of game. And again, it's also a more common platinum than Sakura Succubus. Again, that's kind of surprising to me. And look at that, we have one more visual novel game, Strawberry Vinegar. I think this one might have been made by another company, though, because it, it had sort of a different design to it, almost, with the dialogue and everything. I don't I don't know. It, it felt like it was made by a different company or something. Uh, this one does not have a PS5 version at the time this is being recorded, only PS4 version, uh, or PS4 versions, because it has North American, Europe, and probably an Asian one. Uh, once again, make saves in certain places, get all the different endings, make certain dialogue choices, and you will get your Platinum Trophy. This one does have a lot more trophies in it than the other ones, and this game does take about 7 minutes to get your Platinum, so it does take just a little bit longer, or actually no, it looks like about 8 minutes approximately to get the Platinum. So this one does take a little bit longer than some of the other ones, but I mean again, it's the lowest effort really needed out there for Platinum Trophies, unless you're playing one of the Breakthrough Arcade visual novels that are literally just clicking through screens for all of five seconds. So, yeah, just it's another visual novel, but that one at least has a lot more trophies to it. And again, that one is so much more common, but that one is older, I think. That one's been out for longer, maybe... And then the final game I completed this past week was Tanks vs. Tanks PvP. This is about a two minute long Platinum. It's very easy. You go into like a almost a co-op designed world even if you don't have other controllers plugged in. It goes into a four way split screen. And all you have to do to get the Platinum is destroy a grand total of 20 tanks in like I guess one match. 
The funny thing though is you can just shoot the stationary tanks sitting right next to you 20 times and that's how you get the platinum in one to two minutes. There is literally nothing else to say about this game. Uh, it doesn't look very good, it doesn't play very well, but it's an easy platinum so there you go and it was something different from these little visual novel games at least so kind of broke up the monotony of doing a bunch of these freaking visual novel games in one one night but yeah i got 15 platinums oh not that button but i got 15 platinums in 90 minutes and like i said i'll do a full video of that just to make the process seem a little bit more simple instead of doing separate videos for every single game like i normally do just that that's just unnecessary for a bunch of extremely similar games like this just gotta figure out what i'm gonna call it and it's probably not gonna be out for at least a few more weeks uh, until I can, you know, edit up some of these other videos and then get that one edited together and all. But uh, it was a really fun stream. Had a lot of fun platinum dumpster diving with you guys. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed that stream as well. And the sinking is all done. That was pretty quick. So level 816, 7%, 25,138 total trophies. So again, we hit 25,000 total trophies in this past week, which is an awesome milestone to hit. Once again, a quarter of the way to 100K. 691 platinums, 4,492 golds, 6,644 silvers, 13,311 bronzes. So plans for the upcoming week. I'm probably not going to be grabbing too many trophies this week just because I did that massive dumpster dive. I want to get caught up on some editing and everything. I've still got like four more Aruba vlogs to edit and then upload. I've got plenty of other trophy videos to edit and upload before we get up to this massive series of games. Even though this 15 Platinums in one night will probably get uploaded before some of those other singular Platinum videos. But currently the plan is still in January to do GTA 5. I did join a group for it, but I never heard anything from the group. And I think that their messaging or ad friend settings are privated, so I couldn't even add them. So I, you just gotta love when people do stuff like that. So I'm gonna have to find a different group for that. Again, I'm looking forward to the standard heist, and I'm not really bothered by the Doomsday heist portion. I relearned some of the controls and everything. It's mostly just doing the whole, you know, Doomsday heist, Elite, and Criminal Mastermind challenges. I've been watching all the shinies. He still plays this game like once a week, going for all the trophies, and it looks like it's going to be really, really painful. So there's a very real chance I'm just going to be like, no, screw it, and not... At least not the Criminal Mastermind challenges. I think I can do the Elite challenges because they only have to do with the finales. I, I could see those getting done, but just the Criminal Mastermind challenges, I just don't know if I'm willing to put aside the 40 hours that's going to take to get through just because you have to redo the entirety of the heist with groups three separate times without anyone dying at any point on the hardest difficulty. God, I'm not looking forward to even thinking about that. So we'll see if I end up deciding to actually do that trophy or not. But I am going to try for the Elite Challenges one because that is a little bit easier. Uh, then Division 2, I don't know what's going to happen with that because at first, like me and Ghost and Boosting Group, we were talking about, you know, we might play that game at some point. But then we sort of decide, I don't know if we really all want to... It, we'll, we'll figure it out at some point or another. I don't think it's going to be too terribly difficult. It looks like it's done adding new DLCs with trophies. Knock on wood here. Because I think they are coming out with a new Division game that's like a spinoff or something. So I think it's pretty safe to say that we're done getting actual trophy DLCs. And like three or four of the DLCs are pretty easy. The, the last two are a little bit tougher even though... Like, one of them's a raid, and you can still do it on the easiest difficulty, but it's a harder raid than the first one. And then the Warlords of New York is a lot more in-depth, so we'll have to see about that. February, Outer Worlds and Dead Island Riptide. I actually was able to pick up the Outer Worlds Season Pass for a very better price. It was only like $18 or something. 18 or 19 so it was less than normal. So I went ahead and picked it up, just went ahead and bit that bullet so I can go ahead and do Outer Worlds whenever I want. Probably in, like, February-ish. And then March, COD Classic Shadow of the Colossus. That's certainly not going to do both that month and not at that time. Because those are probably going to be saved for milestones. COD Classic for sure is going to be a milestone platinum. Shadow of the Colossus will probably be a milestone platinum. And then just the other old like PS3 and occasional PS4 games that I want to do at some point. 
I uh, still have plenty of games in my backlog that I've already purchased that are like easy platinums that I need to go back to on the PS4 especially. Uh, although I may just transfer them over to the PS5 and play them on there instead because some of them are rather short. And there's even some Vita games, some Vita stacks of those games that are older that I'll do at some point. So that should be about it for this video, guys. Please like, favorite, share, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell if you haven't already and enjoyed what you saw today. As for schedules for this week, uh, should be pretty normal. Should be a couple of streams this weekend as normal. Uh, so like I said, I still got several more of the Aruba vlogs to edit and upload. Some of them are rather short. Some of them are going to be longer. Uh, so we'll see exactly how long it takes me to get those edited and uploaded. Hopefully get a couple of those up this week so we can make more progress toward uh, getting all those done so I can focus more on the trophy videos and everything. But then, of course, we've got, you know, Platinum Trophy videos I'm sure will come out. This trophy update on Monday. And the streams. With the streams, it's... We're getting closer to the end of Fallout 3. There's only about three or four side quests left, plus Point Lookout, like the remainder of Point Lookout, because I did about half of Point Lookout, so about another maybe couple of hours of that, and then just the remaining couple of story missions and the remaining like three or four side missions, and then of course all of Broken Steel, which is going to take a little bit longer, but progress is being made. So we'll see just how much longer that takes. And of course, with the game crashing a lot more, we'll see if I end up doing any of them as videos. Probably whenever we go through the end of Broken Steel, that one's going to have to be done in a video form just because the game gets so broken at that point in time. It's just not going to be worth it to try to stream, most likely. Uh, and then once that's done, the next one I plan to do is South Park The Stick of Truth. But with South Park The Stick of Truth, I uh, again, that one's going to have to be done probably entirely in video form for obvious reasons. And then also, just as a random other real-world note, I uh, started watching Alice in Borderland Season 2. It's pretty solid so far. I've watched a little bit into the fourth episode of Season 2 so far. So uh, it's it's going great so far. Definitely enjoying it. Definitely recommend that series. It's, it's a good one. Uh, but that's about the only thing, really, I've been majorly watching. So, yep, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and see you back here this week for some more content.